Hello friend, welcome back to week three of pantry challenge. Can you believe it? I just went downstairs and I did some shopping. I grabbed some potatoes that need to be used up. We are going to be, today is Sunday, and we are gonna be prepping Sunday evening actually. Well, it's 323. I'm in the kitchen cooking dinner right now, but I thought while I'm in the kitchen and I'm waiting for my pasta sauce to cook, we have the TikTok viral pasta sauce in the oven right now going. And while that's cooking, because we already have our noodles cooked, we might as well get some prep done for the week since I'm already in here. Instead of having this time just go idle, we're gonna be as productive as possible. We're gonna get these potatoes washed up because we're gonna prep a roast for dinner for tomorrow. I'm gonna get it in the crock pot tonight so that all I have to do is push the on button tomorrow. We're gonna make some steel cut oats for breakfast for the week. And I thawed out some summer squash. If you're interested in knowing what I'm gonna do with that summer squash, I'm gonna show you in just a minute. And I actually meal planned this week. I have right here some breadcrumbs. We're gonna make some chicken schnitzel. This was some breadcrumbs, or it was some bread that was ground up in my freezer. I just toasted it off in the oven so that it's nice and dry. And we are going to make schnitzel with this, so we're gonna be using this up. It is going to be starting as of this week, week three of Pantry Challenge. It's actually gonna be starting to become a challenge because I am running very low on produce. We're gonna make chicken schnitzel, beef roast this week. I wanna make fish tacos. We're gonna make zucchini steel cut oats, kind of like a zucchini bread. I'm gonna flavor it the same, except I'm gonna use yellow summer squash out of the freezer. I've never made that before, but it sounds like it could be really good. We're gonna get our vegetable in. I'm running very low on fresh vegetables in my refrigerator right now. The only fresh vegetables we have right now are potatoes, onions, garlic, carrots, and one bag of salad left. Everything else has been eaten. So that's why I'm saying it's gonna start becoming a challenge starting now because we're gonna to have to get a lot more creative. So one way we're gonna get in some of our veggies this week is we are gonna put zucchini in our breakfast. So let me get these potatoes washed up. I actually have the thought, as I'm washing these potatoes, I should be putting them directly into my crock pot. So I just went and grabbed my crock pot. Let's see if I can do that without making a mess. So I'm gonna stick my crock pot here. When I make roasts in the crock pot, I like to put my potatoes on the bottom so that when I put my beef roast on the top, all those drippings go into the potatoes and it's so good. So as I wash these potatoes, I'm gonna cut off any bad spots these might have and then we'll just plop the whole potato right into the crock pot. Before I sear the beef to, for the roast, I'm gonna get going on the steel cut oats so that can go ahead and just be cooking while we're in the kitchen and then I can dish it up for our breakfast. So I have here two cups of steel cut oats going in Instant Pot. This is my favorite way to cook steel cut oats because Josh is in the background making coffee, if you can hear him. Sorry. Because, you're fine, because you don't have to sit there and stir. So now we're gonna add our package of thawed, and I did squeeze out any extra moisture of our summer squash, some salt, Vanilla, fresh nutmeg, well, maybe, <laughs> my microplane will stay together. I probably added a quarter of a fresh nutmeg. Two teaspoons of vanilla, or cinnamon, not vanilla. Brown sugar, water, milk, and that is everything. We're going to stir that together. That smells incredible. 
it smells like zucchini bread, which is what I'm going for here. Now we're gonna put our lid on our Instant Pot. And this only has to cook for four minutes. So it's so easy to cook steel cut oats in the Instant Pot. Now it's ready to go. I cleaned out our freezers downstairs. I totally reorganized them and I did some shopping when we were down there together. And I took out a chuck roast to thaw so that we would have that ready. So I have a chuck roast in here that's thawed and I also thawed out chicken breast so that when we go to make our chicken schnitzel later this week, we will have thawed meat. That is something, a gift I'm giving myself is not having to worry about thawing the meat, I already did that. So now we're going to sear our chuck roast. This step right here is the main reason I wanted to get to this tonight is searing the meat. I don't love doing this first thing in the morning and if I wanna use my crock pot to make this roast, then if I was to do this in the morning, I would skip this step. But since I'm already in the kitchen, I already kind of had the kitchen mess going, we're gonna get going and we're gonna not skip this step. So I have my roast here that I patted dry with a paper towel. When you're searing meat, you want that meat as dry as possible. And I'm gonna put the salt on this meat right before I put it in this pot because I don't want the salt to draw out the moisture. If you have a bunch of moisture on your meat when you go to sear it, then what's gonna happen is it's gonna steam, not sear, and we don't want that. We want a nice brown, crusty crust. We're not just looking for brown meat, we're looking for browned meat. Very, very seared. That's the sound we want to hear. And once I put that on there, then I'm going to go ahead and put the salt on the other side. This is a chuck roast, and these are my favorite types of cuts of meat to turn into pot roast because they fall apart. They're very, very tough cuts of meat. It's part of the animal that the animal uses a lot of, so it's very, very tough. But if you cook it low and slow, like we're going to in the crock pot all day long tomorrow, all of that toughness, which is all the connective tissue, starts to break down, and it becomes the most tender, juicy cut of roast. I prefer to use a chuck roast over a round roast when I make a roast, if that makes sense. So now that we have this going, we are going to, there was something I was gonna do. Oh, I know. Peel a whole head of garlic. So I'm going to take this and stick it in my crock pot right on top of those potatoes. And then in here, I've got a little bit of red wine and some beef broth. I'm going to deglaze the pan with both of those. That way, any of the stick on bits we can get off with the red wine and the beef broth. And then it's gonna make our cast iron easier to clean because anything that's really stuck on there, I'm gonna get off right now. And then I, you'll notice I did not add pepper to my roast. The reason I did not add pepper to my roast is I find the pepper burns when I cook it at such a high, high heat to get that sear. So instead of putting it on before I sear it, I put my pepper on my roast after I sear it. I'm gonna put a little pepper down. I'm gonna lift up my roast and I'm gonna put a little pepper on my potatoes too. There we go, perfect. And now I need to get some pot holders here. Oh, okay. Well, this is part of pantry challenge. I just found some bananas. I don't know why I'm storing my bananas in the cupboard there. Those look like they need to be used up. 
or they're going to go bad. I'm going to forget them in there, so I, I'm going to preserve those up in just a second. But we're going to take our red wine beef broth mixture and we're going to pour that right on top of our roast. We're going to add our garlic to our roast that we peeled, a couple on top, a couple on the side. And then when I was cleaning out my freezer, I found these pearl onions. I want to go ahead and get these used up. So I'm going to put some underneath here and some on top here. And the last thing we're gonna add is some Worcestershire sauce. I probably am gonna add about a quarter of a cup. I love the flavor of beef and Worcestershire and red wine and black pepper together. Now I'm gonna pop the lid on this and I'm gonna stick this liner in the refrigerator and dinner is prepped for tomorrow. I'm gonna to take my crock pot liner, I'm gonna set this right over here because tomorrow we are going to use that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get out a few containers to put our steel cut oats in. We're not gonna have that steel cut oats today. That's gonna to be for this coming week breakfast. But th that is now out. I need to grab a few more, but I think they are in my dishwasher, which my dishwasher is clean, so I need to unload that. I think it's just drying right now. I'll stick my dishes in the sink. Oh, my bananas. What I'm gonna do with my bananas is I always keep a bag in my freezer that I put bananas in when they are showing signs that they need to be used. You probably can hear Josh again in the kitchen. Now what I like to do when I put my bananas in the freezer so I know how much one banana is, is I always cut them into thirds so I know that three pieces is the equivalent of about one banana. I used to just cut them up into random sized pieces, but then if I was following a recipe that said you need four bananas or three bananas, I never knew exactly how many banana pieces to put in there. Or if I'm making a smoothie and I wanna know how many bananas I'm putting in my, well, this one I just cut in half, which is a little unfortunate, but that's okay. Then I kind of have a rough estimate of how much bananas I'm adding to my smoothie. So I will reuse this bag multiple times and eventually it will need to be replaced. So this is just gonna go in the freezer, just like that. Since I'm still waiting for my pasta sauce to be done out of, in the oven, I'm gonna take this time to go ahead and clean up my stove. Just trying to keep, keep me busy, busy, busy in the kitchen while I can, while my food is cooking. So I'm just trying to be as efficient as possible. We've got our steel cut oats done. Those are going to be done in just a couple minutes. I just have to wait for it to release so I can open the Instant Pot. We have dinner done for tomorrow. And in just a matter of minutes, we're going to have dinner done tonight, for tonight, plus leftovers. And that way Josh has a breakfast he can bring tomorrow for lunch. Let me try that again. He has a breakfast he can bring tomorrow for breakfast. And he is going to have a lunch. The pasta that is dinner tonight is going to turn into his lunch tomorrow. That looks fantastic. So I'm going to go ahead and get dinner going for tonight. We will sit down and eat dinner. And by the time we're done with dinner, I will be able to dish up our breakfast for the week. And then I will be able to, I probably won't unload and load the dishwasher until tomorrow. It's kind of part of my morning routine. I don't think I have the energy in me tonight to do it. It's only 4.10. We're going to have an early dinner because we had a late breakfast. And so we didn't eat lunch. So we're going to go ahead and eat dinner. And then I'm going to relax for the rest of the day. And then we will be back in the kitchen tomorrow. But I will, after dinner, have to dish up. Our breakfast. I take that back. My steel cut oats are done and I want to give them a taste test and I figured before I sit down I would rather have all my kitchen tasks done so that once I sit down I can be done for the night. So we're going to stir this up. This smells incredible. It smells very very cinnamon in me. I wonder if I put too much cinnamon in it but I'm going to give this a taste test real quick. This is what it is looking like. So you can definitely see the squash in there. And if I had put zucchini, you'd be able to see green zucchini. This is going to be exceptionally hot. So I need this to cool down quite a bit before I can taste it. And I know that I'm going to put some butter 
in my containers. So I'm going to go ahead and get a chunk of butter out so I can put this in each one. It's really hot. That is exceptionally delicious. That is some of the best steel cut oats I think I have ever made. I will write that recipe exactly what I did down in the description box. If you're not as big of a fan of cinnamon, I would just put two teaspoons of cinnamon in it, not two heaping teaspoons of cinnamon in it. I was not sure about this idea when it first came to me, but I will make this so many times over again because it is so good. This is the beauty of a pantry challenge is it forces you to get creative and you can come up with some of the best recipes that you didn't even know. You, it forces your creativity and you can maybe make something that is going to become your new favorite. And this just might become our new favorite. I love it. Okay. So we put, I divided that between six containers. So that was two cups of uncooked steel cut oats is making six servings plus two cups of shredded squash. So that's a pretty good serving of vegetable in each one of these breakfasts. Now I'm gonna take a pat of some of this delicious grass-fed butter, and I'm gonna put a pat on each one. I like to put this on the top so that when you go to microwave it, that's how I reheat it, I use microwave, then it kind of sits on the top. I don't like to mix it in because I feel like you can get the flavor of the butter better because this butter is so good. So I'm gonna put the lid on. I will let them cool a little bit before I stick these in the refrigerator. But now we have breakfast. Now I'm gonna to finish tonight's dinner. So I will see you next time we are in the kitchen making, what are we making tomorrow? Oh, our, our roast. So we need to make a vegetable. We're gonna to have to figure something out for that. And we are going to need to make a gravy tomorrow. So it's gonna be really good. Welcome back. It is Monday, day two of the week. And I was going to make a pot roast today and have it going on the crock pot all day. But I didn't really have much going on today. I was kind of just puttering around the house. And tomorrow we're gonna to be doing a huge preservation project. This is just two of the three crates of potatoes we need to preserve up. It's gonna be a very busy day. So I thought I should use my crock pot meal, or my crock, yeah, my crock pot meal that I prepared on the day that we are gonna be spending a ton of time in the kitchen busy doing food preservation projects. And so today I have the energy to cook, so we're gonna make some chicken schnitzel for dinner and I haven't made this in so long. I've only made this one other time and I'm excited we're making it today. We of course, it's the week of the potato. We are trying to use up as much potatoes as we can. I washed up just some of these little tiny potatoes and we're going to boil these potatoes and we're gonna make some mashed potatoes real quick here. I do have some freeze dried potatoes that I want to experiment with. I probably should have put these potatoes in this water or in this pot before I put the water in so I don't overfill my pot but I'll just empty some water if I need to but we need to use these fresh potatoes first so the freeze-dried potatoes we will have to experiment with once we use up all of these fresh potatoes so I'm putting clean potatoes into cold water I was thinking about roasting these but I think I want to make them into mashed potatoes because I'm gonna dump a little bit of this water out. A little bit more. We're gonna make a really yummy sauce to go 
over our potatoes and I thought mashed potatoes would be better for a sauce over it than roasted potatoes. So I see that there's a little green spot on two of these potatoes so I'm going to go ahead and cut that off. You don't really want to eat green on potatoes because it can cause you to have an upset tummy. But if you have eyes on your potatoes like I do over here, these potatoes are just fine to eat as long as they're not moldy or anything. These are still nice and firm. Yes, they have eyes growing on them, but they are still perfectly fine once we get them washed and peeled. There probably are gonna be a couple in here that we need to go ahead and compost. But it is time to, or tomorrow, it's time to go ahead and deal with all these. But tomorrow is when we're gonna deal with them. So let's go ahead and prep our chicken. I thawed out four chicken breasts and I also am going to go ahead and pull out a red cabbage because we are going to make some red cabbage to go along with our dinner tonight. These are some pretty big chicken breasts. So what I'm gonna do is trim off any fat and any bits that I don't want in my schnitzel. And then I'm gonna fillet this in half and we are going to pound out this chicken so that it's nice and thin. Now that I've filleted all my chicken, I'm gonna take a piece of parchment paper and lay it on one side of the chicken. I'm gonna fold it over and I'm gonna pound using this measuring cup. I don't have a meat tenderizer, but this works just fine. And we are going to we are going to flatten this chicken out until it's about a quarter inch thick. So that's perfect. I'm going to repeat this process until I have have all my chicken breasts nice and thin. So we'll put the thin ones here. So I thought if I cooked up eight pieces of this for dinner tonight, that'd be way too much. So I only filleted half or three of the chicken breasts. One of the chicken breasts I sliced up thinly and we'll cook this in the next day or two. I just need to figure out what we're gonna cook it with or I'm gonna throw it back in the freezer. I'm gonna set my chicken aside here and I'm going to get out the things that we need in order to dredge our chicken breasts. So in this first dish, I'm gonna add some flour and we're gonna season our flour up with some salt and pepper. Maybe a little bit more salt. But I'm gonna mix in the flour, salt, and pepper here. And I think the next thing we were gonna do is take care of the next part of this dredge, which is gonna be three eggs. These are really small eggs that I got from the grocery store. I think two would probably be fine, except for the fact that these are such teeny tiny eggs. I've never seen such small eggs at the grocery store before. But I'll take what I can get because my chickens are not laying eggs right now and these are the eggs that they have at the store and I'm grateful that I was able to get them because they've been in a serious shortage in my area. So we are going to scramble these. It looks like I got a couple of eggshells in here I'm going to get out real quick. And I'm not following a recipe here, I am just winging it just from what I've seen on TV. The last part of this is going to be our breadcrumbs that we made. These are just some sourdough bread that I had left over that needed to be used up. So I threw it in the freezer and then I ground it up and I just toasted it and dried it. And so this is going to be our dredging station, flour, eggs, and some breadcrumbs. Well, I was gonna try to make dinner and have it ready when Josh got home from work, but that's not gonna happen because the baby needs me. We've kind of got 
almost everything prepped. I'm gonna turn these potatoes off because it's gonna be about 20 minutes before Josh gets home. I can hear that I am needed. So we've got our chicken prepped. The only thing I need to prep next is our cabbage. So we'll do that when we get back. We are back in business. That only took a second. He just needed a little bit of help falling asleep. And now we can go ahead and get going on dinner. So we might be able to have dinner, not ready when Josh gets home, but pretty close. So I have a red cabbage here. I'm only gonna cook half of it. We're gonna make like a sweet and sour traditional cabbage. So I'm going to take this half and we're gonna put this back in the fridge. When we make tacos, we will make a slaw with the rest of that cabbage. So I'm going to cut this into slices. Kind of thin slices. Our mashed, our potatoes, not our mashed potatoes, our potatoes are done, so I'm gonna get those strained. I'm gonna let those strain for just a minute, and while those are straining, we're gonna get our cabbage into this pot, and I'm gonna get everything basically ready, because once you make the chicken, you wanna eat it really hot, so it's nice if you can have your sides done because you wanna eat your chicken when it's nice and crispy. So that's probably plenty of cabbage for both Josh and I and some leftovers. I'm cooking six cutlets, so that'll be dinner tonight and then we'll have, Josh and I can have it two more times throughout the week for lunch or dinner or whatever it might be. So I wanna make sure I make enough of the cabbage so we have some cabbage and some potatoes with each one of those leftovers. We are gonna be making a, red, a white wine caper sauce to go on top of the mashed potatoes and the cutlets. That's what makes this so good. I want to get this cabbage going. So I'm going to turn this on kind of like a low. We're going to add two tablespoons of sugar, a quarter cup of white vinegar, two tablespoons of butter, and we're gonna put a lid on that, and we're just gonna let that slowly cook. While our cabbage is cooking, we are going to go ahead and dredge our chicken. So the first thing I'm gonna do is dredge the chicken in flour. Fully coat it, and then an egg. Maybe two eggs was, or three eggs wasn't enough. I kind of feel like I might need another one. Those eggs were so tiny. You know what I should do? I should have one hand that's for dry ingredients and one hand that's for the wet ingredients so that I don't make a complete mess on my fingers, but I've already done that, so we're kind of in it now. I had the perfect amount of eggs and breadcrumbs to get our six cutlets breaded and ready to go. We are ready to start cooking our chicken. We also still need to finish our mashed potatoes. We've started the mashed potato, or we've cooked the potatoes, but we haven't flavored them at all. But the first thing I'm gonna do is get our cast iron heated up. And I have in here maybe a quarter of an inch of avocado oil. Our cabbage is cooking away. While our cabbage and our oil are heating and cooking, we're going to finish these mashed potatoes. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. Josh just came home and fixed my dishwasher. My dishwasher was broken this morning, and so now I have a functioning dishwasher again, which is good. I can't, unfortunately, put all these dinner dishes in the dishwasher because I it wasn't able to do yesterday's dishes. I'm just going to throw this flour away because this flour had raw chicken and so it needs to be tossed. For the mashed potatoes, I need to grab a couple things out of the refrigerator. For our mashed potatoes, I'm gonna add a little bit of butter, some heavy cream. I left the skins on these potatoes because I like the texture it leaves. And then we're gonna put some sour cream. If 
if you've been around here for any length of time, you know I typically put garlic and Parmesan cheese in my mashed potatoes, but I think the sour cream will go a little bit better with tonight's dinner. And then we're gonna mash these up. Typically I wouldn't mash purple potatoes because there are purple potatoes in here, but I need to use them up and so that's, they're in here and that's just fine. I think our oil is hot. I think I'm gonna give it actually a minute longer. Well, no, that looks like it's ready. So I'm gonna take one of our chicken cutlets. It is best, well, no, that's not, that's not hot. We're gonna wait just a second. Note to self, when making mashed potatoes, make sure you mash them when the potatoes are still hot because once they cool down, they're a lot harder to mash. So I'm gonna put them back on the stove and let them heat up just a little bit because this butter is not even melting because they've cooled down so much. Now our oil is ready. It is best if you let the cutlets sit with the breading for just a minute before you actually put it in the stove to cook. That sizzle, that's what we want to see. These only take a couple minutes on each side. I'm only gonna put three in here. We're not gonna overcrowd the pan. And then in the oven, I went ahead and I put some foil lined baking sheet with a drying rack on the top. And so once these come off the stove, we'll stick them in the oven to keep warm while we cook the other three and we make the pan sauce. Well, it's not just that I waited for these to cool before I mashed them. They are a little bit undercooked. It's okay. They still taste really good. I just tasted them. They're not the best mashed potatoes I've ever made though, but this chicken's smelling really good and I think it's ready to be turned. It's starting to brown around the outside. Oh yeah, look at that. Beautiful. Perfect. done. I want to make a pan sauce to top our chicken. So what I'm going to do or what I just did is I poured out that grease into the garbage can and I just diced up some red onion. If I had shallots, I would use shallots, but I don't have any of those. So I just diced up maybe a quarter of a red onion and we're going to get that in here sauteing. We're going to cook that down in a little bit of our garlic infused avocado oil just a little bit and i'm going to add a little bit of salt in there just so that that can start cooking down those onions i'm going to put the rest of my stuff away because that's going to take just a second to do that these onions are looking perfect they're caramelizing nicely so now I'm gonna add a good amount of white wine to this. This is just a Sauvignon Blanc. It's just what I already had open. And I'm gonna cook this down by half. I want quite a bit of sauce, so I'm probably gonna put that whole bottle in there. We're gonna cook that down a ton. While that's cooking down, I'm gonna add this whole little jar of capers. This is two point, it's kind of confusing. It says 2.4 and 3.5 ounces, but we're gonna put all of those in there. And this is gonna take just a minute for it to cook down by half. We still need to season our pan sauce, so I'm gonna add a little bit of pepper. and salt. To make a pan sauce, it always starts the same way. You take the pan that you made your steak in, your chicken in, your fish in, whatever it might be, and 
I had to strain off a ton of that fat because obviously there was, you know, we kind of pan fried the chicken in this. But say you cooked a steak and you just had a little bit of pan drippings in the bottom of the pan, leave that in there and cook your onions, your shallots, your garlic, whatever it might be in those drippings from the steak or the fish or the chicken. And then you're going to add red wine or white wine depending on what flavor profile you're going for. Or you could add chicken broth or you could add cider, like an apple cider. If you're in the U.S., apple cider is not alcoholic, but you could do, because I know overseas you guys call apple cider, that's when it's alcoholic. You could do a hard cider or a sweet cider instead of the wine if you wanted, if you didn't want any alcohol. But the alcohol does cook out when you cook it. And then you mount it with butter, which is what we're going to do here in just a second. You can, well, let me show you. This is starting to reduce down and thicken up. Oh, yeah, that's looking beautiful. So when I take my spoon, can you see how it's trailing? There's leaving a little bit of a... You can actually see the bottom of the pan. That is thickening up beautifully. So now what we're going to do is turn the heat off. We've got cold, cold butter. And we're going to put one tablespoon in at a time. And we're going to whisk this in. And that is going to thicken and emulsify our sauce. So I'm probably going to put about four tablespoons of butter in this. And I'm going to do one tablespoon at a time. You can kind of see how it's getting lighter in color where that butter is mixing in. So we're going to grab another one. This is frozen butter. If you put too much butter in all at once, then your sauce could separate where the butter doesn't actually emulsify into the white wine. taste this sauce real quick here to see how we're doing. That is so good. It's got a nice little bit of sweetness and tang. Delicious. All right. You know what I think it needs though? I think it needs a little bit more sweetness. I'm going to add about a tablespoon, maybe a, maybe a teaspoon and a half of sugar to this because we've got the vinegar in that cabbage. I don't want both of the elements to be too tangy, so we're going to give it a taste test now with that sugar. But I want to make sure the whole meal is balanced. Oh. That is... So good. Oh my goodness, this is gonna be perfect. Now our potatoes, are they the best potatoes I've ever made? No. They are a little bit undercooked. They taste good. The texture could be a little better. You can't win everything. But overall this dinner is gonna be phenomenal because this chicken is perfectly cooked. I'm going to call Josh in to eat dinner, and this is going to be so good. I should probably taste test that chicken just to make sure. Our cabbage looks really, really good too. Let me give that chicken a taste test. I'm going to put a little bit of our sauce on the chicken before I taste it so I can taste what the whole thing is going to taste like. that crunch but that chicken is so crunchy when you cook with the white wine it kind of becomes well because that's kind of like a citrusy Sauvignon Blanc is kind of a citrusy wine it's almost like traditional I think schnitzel you put lemon juice on it so it kind of has that feel plus the capers are pickled so it's kind of got that like tartness that you want with the richness of the fried chicken because it is basically pan fried this is going to be a phenomenal dinner. 
Hey friends, we are now on day Tuesday of the week and I am in the middle of a huge food preservation project. We are preserving up tons and tons of potatoes. We've got potatoes in here, we're turning into mashed potatoes to make shepherd's pie for dinner and for a freezer meal. One way I wanna preserve up these potatoes is to preserve them in a meal. So we're gonna make a ton of mashed potatoes and top our shepherd's pie with it. So what I've just done is I have diced up carrots and celery. We have some celery that's already pre-diced from last year's garden, but I needed a little bit more. I diced up some onion and I thawed some ground beef. So now what we're gonna do is get our ground beef browned. I was gonna make that roast for dinner tonight, but I think that I'm gonna save that for later in the week because I'm already gonna be cooking this. We might as well have this for dinner tonight. I didn't think through this all the way. If I had, I probably wouldn't have done beef roast and shepherd's pie in the same week, but sometimes that's how it works out. And so that's how it's working out today. So I'll probably just end up making a small shepherd's pie for dinner tonight. And then I'll like it a nine by nine. And then, so we don't have as many leftovers. And then the ones I'm freezing, I'll freeze in a nine by 13. We're gonna season our ground beef with some salt. And black pepper. We're getting some really nice browning on this ground beef, which is gonna add some amazing flavor to our shepherd's pie or cottage pie technically because we're not making this with lamb. Now that I flipped it, I'm gonna let that sit for a good few minutes and let that brown really well on the other side. I just added the celery, onions, and carrots to our ground beef. So we're gonna let this cook down until the carrots and onions are everything are nice and soft and tender. I almost forgot to add our homegrown celery into this. So I'm gonna get this right here in the middle so that can start thawing and cooking down. I'm gonna bury it so we can make sure we use up that homegrown celery. Now that this is all cooked, our veggies are nice and tender. I don't wanna overcook the veggies because this is gonna cook in the oven one more time. I'm adding about three more tablespoons of butter. This is grass-fed beef, and so it's very, very lean. And I need a little bit more fat in order to make the roux so we can make the sauce for, that's gonna thicken up our cottage pie or shepherd pie, whatever you wanna call it. So I'm gonna mix in about, I don't know, that was probably about a cup or so of flour because remember, we're making a huge quantity of shepherd's pie. So we have enough for dinner tonight and enough for a consecutive meal. Now normally I would add a little bit of tomato paste, but I don't feel like opening a can just for that. And I have some homemade ketchup that's really thick. So I'm just gonna add this instead. And that'll add just a little bit of zing, a little bit of vinegar flavor, and that will be delicious as well. And then I need to season this up with a little bit more salt and pepper because I've never seasoned up the vegetables. So I'm always trying to make sure we season every layer as we go. Oh, and then you know what I realized? I just realized I forgot to add garlic to this. I probably should cut up some of my fresh garlic to use that, but I'm not gonna do that because time. Today's a busy day and we're gonna use some of our freeze dried garlic. So that was probably about a tablespoon and a half of garlic. And we're gonna mix all of these ingredients in. I'm gonna cook this down or just cook it until that flour kind of cooks that raw flour flavor out. And then we'll add the rest of the ingredients. Now we're gonna take some red wine, probably about a cup, and we're gonna deglaze the pan with that. And we're gonna cook out any of the alcohol in that. That's just gonna add a really yummy flavor. If you don't like to cook with wine, you can go ahead and skip that step. But it does add a beautiful flavor to this. 
We're also going to add probably a quarter cup of Worcestershire. And I forgot to shake this. It's always best to shake it first. And we're going to add beef broth. I might need to open one more of these. I'm going to give this a taste test because I can adjust the seasonings now. Mmm. Perfect amount of salt. Perfect amount of wine. The broth, so savory. I'm going to add a little bit more pepper. Pepper, I find, just really takes shepherd's pie over the top. And now I just need this to thicken up a little bit. And our base is done. This is so good if you wanted to add a little bit of thyme rosemary things like that you can i don't usually add a lot of those herbs to my shepherd's pie i do have them in my recipe but i prefer to keep them out i am going to add some homegrown parsley from last year's garden just to add a little bit of color a little bit of brightness and we're going to get that stirred in and this is done so now what we're going to do with this is put it in our containers. This one's going to be for the freezer. This one's going to be for dinner tonight. We may have enough for three. I'm not sure. We'll have to see when we get it in our container. Actually, no, this is going to be perfect for two. I like peas in mine, but I don't like to overcook them. So I put them in straight from frozen right at the end so that all they have to do is cook when they're in the oven. These were some that needed to be used up, so you can see there's a little bit of frost on them, but I'll just stir that in and that will be fine. We'll just top it like that. And then all we have to do is wait for the potatoes and that is our shepherd's pie. So I'm gonna set these aside and let them cool. We just made a ton of mashed potatoes. I have four trays for the freeze dryer. I have a freezer meal here and I went ahead and I put the mashed potatoes on the shepherd's pie or cottage pie. Technically it's cottage pie because it has beef, not lamb, but tomato, tomato. We're going to cook our shepherd's pie for dinner tonight. That's gonna be fantastic. We did a bunch of canning. I have my canner going and I got to do a couple dishes. So while our dinner is cooking, I'm gonna get the dishes going and I don't have to make a side. The one thing I love about meals like shepherd's pie, chicken pot pie, meals, stuffed peppers, things where you've got your potato, your starch, and your protein all in one. If you don't have the energy to make a side, you don't have to feel guilty, or I guess you should never feel guilty if you don't make a side, but you don't have to make a side. I'm not making a side, so we're gonna enjoy that when that comes out of the oven. But for now, I'm gonna get a couple dishes done and the last few things in the freezer. And that is dinner tonight. That's gonna to be so good. I already know it's gonna taste good because I've tasted the potatoes and I've tasted the filling. So together it's gonna to be incredible. I will see you back next time we are in the kitchen. Alrighty friends, I just got in from outside. It is raining cats and dogs. I'm not doing any cooking today. We are eating leftovers, but we have landscapers here that are working really, really hard in this gross, gross weather. So I just pulled out of the freezer. These are some peach hand pies we made over the summer. We went peach picking and I took some of those peaches and I turned them into these hand pies so that this winter we could enjoy the taste of summer, which is exactly what we're doing here right now. I want to, I'm making enough so each of the landscapers can have one of these pies and then Josh and I can have one of these pies. So I have the oven preheating to 400 degrees. As soon as this preheats, we will take these out of the oven and I will be able to divvy out these hand pies to everyone that really deserves a really warm, yummy dessert on this very, very cold and gross day. And here are these pies out of the oven, cooked to perfection. They're nice and crisp on the bottom. One for each of the landscapers and one for Josh and I. Really excited about this. I am doing, that's the only cooking I'm doing today. I'm loving having pre-made desserts in my freezer. I have been about every other day popping a couple cookies in the freezer for the landscapers and it's just been really great to be able to 
be able to bless somebody with a home-baked treat and I don't have to do any of the effort. So something moving forward I'm always going to try to work on is keeping desserts, cookie dough, hand pies, all the things as much as I can in the freezer just so that in times like this I don't have to dirty my kitchen. I can just pop them in the freezer and or <laughs> the oven from the freezer and uh, I can bless somebody with a homemade treat. So I'll see you next time we're in the kitchen doing some cooking. Josh and I have a meeting we have to go to, or be at, it's a Zoom meeting in just a little bit. But I wanted to go ahead and finish dinner. I baked up some peanut butter cookies. They were frozen, it was just frozen cookie dough. We made the cookie dough together a while ago. I baked it in the oven so that I could gift that to the landscapers. This roast has now been cooking away for hours and hours and hours, and it is all done, I think. Let's check to see its tenderness. Let's see. Oh, you know what? It's only three o'clock. That definitely could be more tender. Yeah, but that's not done. We're not gonna call that done yet. So I'm gonna put the lid back on. My crock pot had gone to keep warm, so I am going to put it back on high. It's three o'clock right now, so it probably, we probably won't eat dinner until six o'clock or so, so it should have plenty of time to get tender. I'll show you what that looks like when it gets tender. This is why I like a chuck roast because normally it gets tender and it just falls apart and shreds up really easily and it's really delicious. At the bottom of the crock pot, if you remember, we do have purple potatoes down there. So we're gonna have that as a side. And I don't like to put my vegetables in with my roast because I feel like they just get overcooked that way. And I, my kitchen's, clean it it's clean so i do not want to do any real cooking other than what we did i normally would make a gravy but what i'm going to do is i'll just drizzle some of the red wine and juice on top the other day when we made that shepherd's pie i sliced or i peeled and washed and cut into matchsticks and i was going to put all of this in the shepherd's pie but i peeled way too many carrots so i'm going to take these carrots that i chopped in matchsticks and we're gonna have carrots, raw carrots as a side. So that's gonna be really easy. So here is our broth with our fat that's at the top. So I am going to pour this over our potatoes or Josh can if he wants in his beef, just to add a little bit of moisture and flavor. But I'm gonna save this. And if we end up making stroganoff with this beef broth, with all the red wine and Worcestershire and beef drippings and beef broth in that, and this, that is gonna be one incredible dinner. And then here we have our potatoes. I took a bite of these little pearl onions. So good. Oh my goodness, plus the roasted garlic. It's been cooking all day and this is just, I mean, it's kind of brown and beige and kind of boring looking, but the flavor on this is incredible. I don't use the crock pot a ton other than things like soups and chilies and stuff like that. But one thing that I do think that the crock pot does a really good job on is beef roast because it's just cooking low and slow. Basically, I'm braising the beef roast in the crock pot instead of doing it in the oven, and so you don't really have to pay attention to it as much. So it's gonna be a fantastic dinner. Josh had the ability to work from home today, which was awesome. So I'm gonna dish him up some dinner and we are gonna sit down and eat. And I'm just really grateful for this beautiful, simple, easy dinner that I did not have to put any effort in really today other than pull it out of the crock pot. That was so easy. The kitchen is still clean. Tomorrow what my goal is, is to clean out these drawers. They are a disorganized disaster. We've been in this house now for about five and a half months, I think. I don't know if it's been that long, but long enough to know that I know where things are working really well and where things are not working really well. So we're gonna do a little bit of organization and I'm really excited about that. So I will see you next time we were in the kitchen. Welcome back friends, it is Friday and we have a family dinner we're going to tonight and a family dinner we're going to later on this weekend. So I decided to go ahead and make up a lemon poppy seed loaf and a cranberry orange loaf because I have all the ingredients for both of these in my pantry. So I got those baked up. I don't have to do any more cooking this week. I have enough leftovers in the refrigerator. So we are going to see you back 
next week for week four of pantry challenge next week we are hosting i am hosting a huge dinner here at our house so we are going to be challenged to make a big feast for a bunch of people just with the ingredients that i have on hand and then we are also needing to eat for the rest of the week so that's going to be kind of a fun challenge maybe i will rely on freezer meals for most of the week and then i can focus on doing a bunch of cooking for the party that i'm super excited to have some family members back in town so thank you for being here this week while we challenged ourselves for week three of pantry challenge and i'm really really looking forward to week four this is kind of where it gets fun because it starts to become more of a challenge and i guess i'm just making it more of a challenge by throwing in a big party that we're going to be having but it's going to be fun and i'm excited about it I just want to say thank you for taking time out of your day to spend time with me throughout this week. It's been a really fun week. We've had some really good meals. I'm actually about to heat up some food so that I can enjoy some lunch. I just spent time organizing a ton of these drawers and cupboards that needed some serious organization and some serious love and attention. So I'm grateful that I was able to take some time to do that today, but I am hungry. So we're going to enjoy the fruits of our efforts that we had done earlier and I don't need to worry about cooking something up. I can just heat something and have a really nice meal. So thank you for taking time out of your day to be with me. I greatly appreciate it. I can pop some of my other videos here. You can go enjoy between now and my next upload and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye friend.